future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Pierre Lint. This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions, the leading iGaming PAM platform with a modular approach, including many benefits like a fast, secure, and scalable API-based platform integrated with all major third-party products and services. Make sure you head over to Pragmatic Solutions and join our smart thinking. So, so Bill, that's it. Hugh, let's, uh, let's uh, jump into it. Yeah. Give it a try here. So, uh, first of all, it's great to have you here. Uh, you, you're, you're the CPO of Bad Omber Gaming. And I'm going to start this podcast with a bit of a quiz. Okay. Because, um, someone uh, told me, or I heard from your side, <laughs> more or less, that, uh, uh, that you have an obscure passion for footballers in the 90s. Yeah. So I want to put that to the oh, test. Oh, I shouldn't uh, have said that. Okay. So in 1995, <laughs> uh, a lethal striker joined Leeds. Yeah. Just to be sacked a couple of months later. To be sacked a couple of... A striker joined Leeds as a, as a player? Yes. And it was uh, in Leeds known as like the, the worst uh, the worst player that ever played in Leeds. <laughs> The worst I'll player. give you a hint. Okay. Uh, so okay. I am Swedish. Yeah. As is the player. You're Swedish. Is Thomas Brolin? There we go. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, this podcast would have been very flat. That would have been, a, would have been a bad start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bingo, bang, bang, bang. Great, yeah. great team. So, uh, okay, I'll, um, uh, you, you definitely passed the Okay, contest. my credentials are, are cleared. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. But uh, 1990s football players, unfortunately, it's not what we're going to talk too much about uh, today, but rather... We can, we'll get into it later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. At, at the end of it, yes. But rather the future of uh, crypto gambling. Yes. Um, so obviously you're the CPO of Bad Omer Gaming, and perhaps as a starting point, you want to perhaps introduce uh, Bad Omer Gaming and your own background here. Yeah, of course. So um, we've been working uh, in Bad Omer Gaming at bringing a crypto casino platform to life. So the idea is that... If you want to open a crypto casino, we'll offer you the full white label package or uh, any part thereof. So um, we have a fully functioned platform that's built specifically to serve uh, the crypto niche of the market from the ground up. Um, a very flexible content management system that allows you to create a kind of a, your own bespoke website, um, which we've tried to kind of separate as we see with other platforms where when you look at the website, you can kind of know which site it which platform it belongs to. We've tried to avoid that by creating something much more flexible. Um, and then obviously the website itself and all of the key uh, content integrations and stuff that underpins that, you know. So um, we've been, uh, we brought our first couple of brands to life just this year. So uh, our last one went live this week. Um, we're on four brands now. We've got uh, a couple more planned for um, into the new year. And um and yeah, so things things going really well. Um, currently hiring like crazy, uh, and uh, yeah, I've been, been been kind of at it eighteen months probably in total. Um, and then my background, I came from uh, from regulated gambling, so I was at Paddy Power, uh, then Paddy Power Redfair, then right. then uh, went through that journey, right. um, there for ten years in a, in a bunch of operational and product roles. So uh, then got the opportunity to to come aboard here and to do something very exciting. Fantastic. So uh, if someone is looking for a job, then that over gaming is uh, absolutely the doors are open. front end front end developers, please. Okay. <laughs> please, please. Uh, yeah. So I thought this was uh, interesting to uh, to do this podcast to, uh, to get today together with you here because um, obviously crypto gambling is um is a segment of an industry that is exploding clearly. Mm. And uh, um, I, I've said this a couple of times before in the podcast, but uh, but just to reiterate, I had a conversation with with a friend of mine. Uh, a while back and we, we were speculating in who will be the biggest operator in the US uh, yeah. in uh, you know in the coming years and you know is it going to be DraftKings is it going to be uh, Fanatics or FanDuel or whoever it's going to be and he said no 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 Pierre the biggest operator is going to be State mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and I just thought that was a bit uh, funny and it tells the story again of how, just how big the the segment is currently obviously absolutely uh, and uh, so, so first of all, you know, it's a good timing that we do this podcast now because um, um, since the beginning of the year, crypto has rallied now yeah. as well. And I saw this today, like uh, year to date, uh, in the time of this recording, Bitcoin is up like 27%. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. Crazy. I think people are... Um, People are assuming that the kind of the worst is over in the economy as well. What, what do you think of the crypto now in general? Is it gonna yeah, be it's funny. It's because uh, obviously the the big thing about crypto is a lot of a lot of it is to do with confidence, right? So yeah. um, 
the, there's a there's a massive impact on what happens with news events. So something like FTX happens, and yeah. then obviously the bottom yeah. falls out of everything, right? right. Uh, because all of a sudden people kind of think, oh, is my is my crypto actually safe? Is it? And and they kind of understand that, you know, some of the best things about crypto where um, you don't you're not tied up in the bureaucracy of regulation. There's also drawbacks to that as well, right? And, right. There's and, no bank guarantees, for example. Exactly. Yeah. So 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 during the rallies, I think people kind of forget that, and then during the dips, people probably over correct for it you know yeah. so i think what you're seeing now is probably um a little bit of a bounce back from that over correction yeah. um back to the level kind of where you'd expect it to be you know yeah yeah uh, it's, a, it's a good point actually and uh, we, we are in the gambling industry after all so we like a little bit volatility absolutely uh, here so we, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's a fun to, uh, to double in yeah um but um into uh, just to uh, talk about crypto gambling specifically mm. um you know from a techno technology point of view yeah uh, what do you think makes crypto gambling different from the like traditional fiat gambling, the the world that you used to? Yeah, so work in? I suppose there's a couple of things. There's um, there's there's customer facing stuff, right? So uh, I think the customer segment is actually a kind of different customer segment, and I suppose we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, even just from a platform perspective, there's things that are uh, that affect your kind of business operations day to day, right? So um, one of the big things is. Uh, you're trying to pay your staff in, in 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 a fiat currency, but you're collecting all your revenue in a cryptocurrency, right? So you need to think about how are you off ramping that crypto? How are you um, making sure that you're not overpaying to do that? When are you picking the right times to do things? Right. Um, and then if you're uh, presenting uh, your crypto to the customer in, in a fiat value, that how are you converting that, you know, so that it's transparent to them? Um, all of those kinds of things are kind of from a business operations perspective. Uh, and then like the, one of the other big things as well is like, um, security, right? So, uh, if you're, when you're dealing with crypto, it, it's much more different to the fiat world in that if somebody manages to get into your system and get money out, it's gone, right? So, oh, you, so, yeah. so you need to think about, um, security in a much more serious way, um, than, than, uh, not that you don't have to think about security in a fiat casino platform, but that you're much more of a target for it in a crypto casino platform, you know? So I think that's something that we've thought about a lot as we've built the platform. Um, and then from a player experience perspective, there's a lot There's a lot that's different, right? So um, you've got stuff like uh, a multi-currency wallet at, a, at, a, at its basic level. So um, on most fiat casinos, you register and you, you, you decide what your currency of choices as you register your account right so it's a euro account or a dollar account or whatever it is but in a crypto in a crypto casino often you'll want to deposit in ethereum or in bitcoin or in so um you need to be able to handle that and then all of the impacts that come from that right so how does your bonus wallet work uh how does your reporting work for each of those individual currencies you know and um there's a lot to that. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Yeah, and I think it's a it's a good point what you mentioned. Um, you know, say that uh, you generate your GDR in a in a lot of different uh, cryptos. Yeah. But what is just out of curiosity? What is like standard practice uh, for the operators? Is it to to hold the, the crypto, or is it immediately to transact into fiat? Usually, yeah, well, I think in our experience, what the best way of doing it, we've found the best way to do it is uh to just hold on till a certain period for a certain period so maybe yeah. at the end of your reporting month and then at that point you're looking to kind of convert it out you don't want to hold on to it long term but look there's different approaches right it just yeah. depends on what the risk profile yeah. of your business is right. and you know there's other i'm sure there's other people you talk to who'd say you know hold it to the end of time yeah, you know exactly, so, exactly. that's the uh, so, so our uh, lead investor in agave next is yolo investment of course yeah, yeah. The crypto world as well, and I, and um, uh, Tim Heath, uh, the, the founder, he's definitely on the more like risk uh, appetite. Uh, yeah, hold it keep, forever kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they keep um, a lot of, of their GDR in crypto for sure. Um, and he said a funny quote that I gave an expo left that last year. He said, uh, uh, crypto is not a transaction method. Mm. Crypto is a state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> and the more you think about it, it's like, Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. There's something. There's something to be said for that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, so, looking at it from a player point of view, yeah. as well. So, first of all, I mean, um, I would have guessed that the uh, the demographic that you deal with is wildly different from mm. the general fiat player as well. Uh, the feeling I get in when I kind of dabble in the crypto world is that uh, the crypto natives, if you will, 
uh, they are they seem to always be a couple of steps ahead yeah in kind of how they interact and, and so on and so forth and that must put uh, like a different a much different expectation uh, from the operator uh, for the crypto natives to then be comfortable to interact with that platform like, can you talk about that as well absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so um i think i think you hit the nail on the head like i think uh the demographic is entirely different because if you think even just as an entry point into a crypto casino, you need to understand how to buy crypto and how to transfer crypto, right? So, yeah. the it's it's uh, there's there's instantly a um, kind of a technology technological understanding barrier, uh, if you like, yeah. in order to in order it's to be hard. able. To, it is right. It's so it, it's quite intimidating. Right? It's quite yes. an intimidating thing. Like if yeah. I go if I go home and talk to my parents about crypto, they just kind of throw their hands up yeah. in the air and um, <laughs> they they won't be really willing to engage in it. But uh, so you're you're already talking about kind of a savvier, um, certainly from a technological perspective, but also even from a from a gambling perspective, a savvier customer, right? So um, I would say that the the customers that we get are um, the players that we get are, are more sensitive about and, and understand more about content. So they understand uh, from a casino perspective, even um, they understand that uh, certain content is runs at a higher margin than other content. You know, they they. Um, and they're kind of willing to take on the casino that you know it's not it's there's there's no misunderstanding from there about what they're getting into in their relationship with against the casino you know it's like they they understand the weight the odds are against them but they fancy the chances you know um so then i think the, one of the other big things for them as well is that uh like um you know i think you mentioned reddit earlier on like if you ever go onto a crypto uh, subreddit and you mentioned that you have some sort of crypto you'll get 50 messages from scammers trying to people trying to take your your, your coins right so um i think that trust is massively important in, right um and, and you kind of see that across a lot of the product features that the leading crypto casinos do so uh if you uh, if you look at a um you know stake or rub or uh or a, a rubet or any of the top guys you ought have a chat window on the right hand side of the of the page right and a lot of the reason behind that is, um, if you, if you, I think if you come to the page and if you see people chatting about the casino and talking about it and getting rewarded by the casino, it instantly builds that level of social proofing and trust so that um, players can kind of feel like, oh, this is a safe place for me to ultimately copy in the address and deposit my money in, right? Um, and that provides other things that they do as well. So you'll see a lot of the crypto casinos have bet feeds uh, showing people who are betting and winning the whole time again. It's just that kind of reinforcement, that social proofing thing. Um, and then a lot of them are moving into even sponsorship now. So like, again, kind of like, rather than make this a faceless um, casino brand on the internet, you know, BC Game are sponsoring the Argentinian football team, stake sponsor Everton, like they're, it's all about kind of like building that trust with people, I think. so. Um, I think that thing, that's a very important thing, and and like they, a lot of them have forums that they have deployed and stuff like that as well. So to create that sense of community around these things, um, because as well, uh, I think, and and you kind of mentioned earlier on about Bitcoin being a a way. What was it? A way of thinking or a, <laughs> yeah, so a state a, of a mind? State of mind. A state of mind. So it's like uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a it's. A, I think the the belief and the love of crypto is a, is a unifying factor in the community. You know, so. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of like Telegram groups specifically around crypto and, and Reddit groups and Discord groups and so on. So I think a lot of the crypto operators are trying to build those ecosystems, build those community ecosystems for players to not only just trust them, but it's also an, an important thing for someone to feel like they belong to a brand. Right. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, that sense of community, mm. I suppose, is something that uh, the online gambling industry is not used to yeah generally it is more or less the opposite really would have right? avoided right yeah yeah more yeah. or less and so it's a quite interesting phenomenon that in the crypto world and the crypto casino world that sense of community yeah it's actually quite important yeah how does operators tackle that it's funny because i think that they've gotten really good at um managing the communities right so uh i was only looking at the stake.com forum earlier on today yep. and uh they had a uh they used to have like a paper post campaign so it was like they would pay people to post on the on the form, and you and you get like a, a small number of satoshis based on the quality and of your post, you know. So yeah. it was like a, it sounds kind of cynical in that I'm paying you to post, but it was right. very much seen as 
the, the way that they had kind of sold it to that community was that it was rewarding them for yeah, positive exactly and, and for creating quality content you know it wasn't mm -hmm. it wasn't just a case of uh, and i'm sure they they had the problem of you know some bot signing up in 30 40 50 yeah. posts um but uh, and with chat with chat gpt maybe that you figure it out how to like hack yeah. the human psyche to like I produce actually, the best they've, they've stopped the campaign now maybe that's really? why <laughs> but uh <laughs> but um, I, I think that they have been really good at building up communities in that way. And uh, even in the chat, they have there's moderators that sit in the chat. They constant, continually kind of reward people. I think they, they manage it quite tightly to make sure that, you know, anybody who's... And, and I, I think, that, to be fair to them as well, they don't um, entirely sanitize it, right? Like if somebody comes on and says, oh, I was playing this game and I'm after spinning it 30 times in a row and I got nothing back, they don't delete that conversation. They let that conversation kind of play out provided it's somewhat constructive you know um, right. and uh i think um i think really the ones that have done really well are really good at managing their communities and uh and um kind of building up that uh brand cachet i think yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. with a group like that you know yeah that's an interesting interesting point like i said it's very counterintuitive generally to how the online gambling industry has functioned yeah but, but also uh, uh, you mentioned earlier as well, kind of the barrier to entry mm. and, uh, you know, signing up a MetaMask, you know, understanding why you need a MetaMask yeah. uh, and then obviously connecting it to the site and all the things like it's, um, it's a very, uh, it's a very complex uh, process to get started in crypto in order to be able to understand how to play on stake or, or any of your brands, yeah, for and example. I, and I think you see it in the numbers, right? So I think you're, uh, if you were coming from a fiat casino world, your conversion from uh your conversion funnel doesn't look great because you know it's that that barrier is a harder barrier to jump but the players you do get are so much more valuable and so much more loyal yeah. um because uh they don't kind of fall into it they they've actively decided they've gone through the effort of, of depositing on your site and then if you're if you're capable of building up that community feeling people really kind of feel a sense of belonging to your brand you know so um yeah but do you, do you think that's um that barrier to entry, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've heard this being talked about a lot in yeah. the crypto world, that that barrier to entry is like something the, uh, the crypto world has to make sure to lower the barrier to entry. Like, yeah. Do you think that eventually is going to happen? Or is it more like, you know, looking back in the 90s when we got used to computers, there is still there is a barrier to entry to get used to computers. Maybe that is just inherent in... Absolutely. Uh, but I, I do think these things become easier over time, right? So... Um... I think there's there's a couple of things like even even on the platform we um we have a, an integrated on ramping service for people to be able to purchase crypto on the site with a card with a credit card right so you're trying to uh, for people who haven't dabbled in crypto before you're trying to make that experience as easy as possible and I think there's things that you can do within products certainly to um to make that easier it's like you know connecting to registering for email and signing up for email 20 yeah. years ago was really difficult right but uh but then they've, they've made it much easier now so um i think that's it's just a there's a, there's a time thing that that where that will become easier and it'll become uh more prevalent i think that, that um particularly you know as people get older and stuff you'll get a crypto fluency that grows up through generations and stuff yeah. like that yeah. uh, another thing as well is talking about kind of the player behavior and things is um mm. So we established that the kind of crypto player, the crypto native is generally a couple of steps ahead of, uh, say, the general population in the way they interact, in the way they use different mediums and, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And um, another interesting factor, I don't know if it's correct or if it's just my biased observation here, but uh, it seems to me that the crypto player uh, generally doesn't prefer real based uh, games like the, 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 mm. uh, the crypto uh, kind of way of gambling is seems to be a very simple way of gambling like with the aviator yeah crash and like kind of like very simple dice game or like high high and low it's like uh is, is that something uh you resonate with as well is it like the real base games is this kind of like a thing of the past is it yeah no, I, I, I don't think so i don't think it's a thing of the past but i i know you're saying so there's uh yeah. i think i think crypto gambling uh in, in its own way it nearly has its own legacy at this point yeah. uh even though it's kind of short-lived legacy where um the first places you could bet crypto online were on these simple games right so the likes the likes of crash yeah. dice plinko right um and uh i think that that uh that that content has become kind of a cornerstone for some of the old school 
uh, crypto gamblers. And then actually, it's nearly like you're not really a crypto casino unless you offer that content as well, right? So it's like, uh, and uh, and it's and it's widely popular, right? So I think um, there's kind of a those games are always going to be associated with crypto gambling. I don't think you're ever going to put those games on fiat casinos and they're going to outperform pragmatic slots. So, you know, um, I just don't think that's going to happen. So, uh, but I think um, there's definitely something about the fact that they were kind of the first experiences to play on uh, and that, that's that's what those crypto players want to play on now. But the, the other thing that's quite interesting, I think when you talk about what crypto players like in terms of content is um, there's a lot of, acquisition comes from crypto casinos through streamers right so um i think what and and certainly we've seen it on our brands is that the content that players are playing in terms of real based content or slot based content is the content that streamers are playing right. um so uh you know bonus buys are huge and uh and and um live casino high stakes is huge i think anything with high stakes is, is kind of is kind of huge anyway but uh but it's it's very much we definitely find it's kind of see it influenced by what are the, the games that those those streamers are right, playing. Right. You know? That's another part as well. Like this tying this together with the community sense of community, yeah. with the uh, the likes of uh, Rushdine and Trainwreck and uh, yeah. uh, the other um, uh, the, the other streamers obviously uh, amass uh, uh, fantastically great communities uh, that uh, they are influencing to move to one way or the other. Obviously, uh, uh, Twitch. Um, uh, had a different say when it came to yeah. uh, the crypto side specifically. Um, but uh, do, do you think uh, now as uh, kind of the competitor, if you will, to, uh, to Twitch has uh, has come to life, uh, kick.com, kick yeah. yeah. Um, is, the, is that now where the community will go? Do you think on the crypto side, is, do they have a chance to? Yeah, I think so. Like, I, I think uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because we're really right in the middle of that at the moment and trying to figure out what we're trying to see what happens, right? But um, there's definitely an element of uh, Twitch is the biggest gaming streaming platform there is. And then when you take people off that, that's obviously going to have a hit in terms of discoverability for those guys, right? Like, uh, would slot streaming have taken off the way it did without Twitch? It definitely would have been more difficult, right? Because right. there would have been no pl is. place for yeah. that to happen, right? Um, but at the same time, I think Twitch uh, and, and slot streamers on Twitch have proven, someone like Train has proven that there's a huge audience for people watching people play games or play, people play right. casino games right so i think um i i love to train your day and i think he's like fifty thousand subscribers on on which you know not quite his two million audience that he had on twitch but like shows that there's a core of players there who who um who want to watch casino games and then uh and who who want to watch this guy so um i think there's definitely a uh I think there's definitely a market for that. Yeah. Like, there, I thought that, like yeah, both uh, Trainwreck and uh, Rushdown never being smart now because obviously they are not allowed to uh, stream necessarily on 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 Twitch when they uh, when they gamble on Stake.com. Yeah. However, uh, they can go on Twitch.com to promote Kick. Yeah. <laughs> so they use they use Twitch as the uh, acquisition to, to bounce them off. Yeah. To Kick. I think he's still doing like video game streams and stuff on Twitch, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like it's keep the brand people. exactly, exactly. Funnel people over to Kick. He's become an affiliate to himself. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was his. Uh, as, uh, you know, t t taking the controversy aside, it's a, it's, a, it's a smart way to uh, to basically get around the rules. Yeah. And to uh, to acquire over. Um, but what did you think about that decision, by the way, of, of Twitch to uh, turn off uh, crypto gambling? Uh, I thought it was. I, 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 I thought it was. A, they kind of. Uh, it was a wishy washy decision, really. I thought that you know we'll leave it on if it's regulated and in yeah, these. It's and, not and, clear. Exactly. It's not clear, right? And I don't. I think um, you know maybe there there might be a, an argument that they could make where they said, oh look, our content creators are opaque about what their deals are with the casino or whatever and maybe they should look for some transparency there but i think if they're um you either you either do it or you don't you know like it's uh i, I kind of feel like the decision that they made was wishy-washy and kind of they made it under pressure rather than kind of it being a real right. uh, strategic thing to do because the problem is it, not the problem but the, the the problem for them is that it's going to pop up somewhere else and someone else is going to do it you know so yeah. um so yeah, I, I I was I was disappointed by it to be honest because I yeah. quite enjoy uh, a lot of that content. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean, but it it moves us into a different question, which is uh, crypto gambling and the uh, the reputation around the crypto gambling mm. in general, because uh, the reputation is often that uh, crypto gambling is associated to uh, kind of offshore gambling. Yeah. Um, 
you know, uh, being able to access uh, gambling sites uh, using a VPN from territories where you shouldn't be able to gamble and so on. Yeah. Um, what's your your opinion there? Is there a problem in your opinion today with crypto gambling as a, uh, as a whole and how it's um, uh, how it's being leveraged by some operators? Uh, and what do you think uh, is going to happen as we go forward into the future? Will the will will eventually uh, the crypto world also uh, the crypto gambling world also move into a more like regulated territory? Yeah, and I think that, I think you hit the nail on the head there. That's the issue. The issue is that. Um, you can't bet with crypto in, in a lot of the regulator markets, right? So uh, I think there's a lot of people who uh, who are, like like we say, are interested in that crypto scene and, and kind of see, crypt, want to be able to kind of prove the value of crypto and want to hold crypto and are interested in crypto. And um, I think a lot of the crypto casinos are servicing the needs of that community, right? Uh, and as long as regulators are unwilling to to take what's the option you know right. what's what, what what can what can those people do so um i think like i think we'll get to a point where uh i mean i, I can't see how we're not there now but, I, but but regulators are going to look and see how much money a lot of these crypto casinos are making and not go well why are why are we losing you know why are people in our country going and playing playing um with them because uh I don't think there's really any reason for them not to accept crypto as a payment method. Like it's, well, I, I, I understand why people are afraid of crypto because people, right. people are afraid of what they don't understand. And then also, like you mentioned, crypto is reputational, has reputational issues, right? So it's like, yeah. uh, a lot of the time it would be associated with, um, scams or, or, uh, people losing money of, of price changes and what have you. So, um, I understand why they, they feel like that, but, uh, I think that that will change in time as people become more off a with kind of the workings of. So, do, so you don't think uh, like today, um, from like a KYC or AML perspective, um, is there a way for operators to still uh, ensure that uh, those checks are as rigid as uh, uh, players with deposit uh, with using fiat? Yeah, I think there's always a way to solve the problem, right? Like, I think um, you can. Uh, whether you're doing it with an NF, with, with NFTs or something, maybe there's, there's definitely a technological solution to that problem around KYC and AML. Yeah. Um, you can still KYC a customer even if, like like a lot of operators uh, will accept a PaySafe card that I can buy in and online and, and deposit into my account, right? And there's no K, KYC or AML in that. So no. um, I think that uh, that's just, it, it just takes a little bit of thinking about to create a solution for something like that. I don't think, and you know, a lot, some other bookmakers, you can put cash in the shops, you know, it's, uh, it's, I don't think that's an unsurmountable, um, right. obstacle. Then, then I suppose, uh, you know, when, when something like this happens with the FTX is kind of it takes from a regulatory well, absolutely. Point of view, it's like two steps back. Well, I, I actually do think that something like that ends up pushing that down the road, right? Because yeah. it, uh, anything that undermines that confidence in, in yeah. crypto, um, because I think a lot of the time the regulators think, well, if we encourage people to buy crypto, then they're exposed to the risk of the price of crypto. Okay. So I don't know. It depends on it depends on where we get to in crypto in the next couple of years, right? Like, um, yeah, maybe we get to a place where we get to a more stable price. And I don't know. I think uh, sometimes I think as well with with the FTX saga. You know, I mentioned it myself here that uh, you know maybe from a regulatory point of view, the whole industry takes two steps back. But actually, another perspective as well is that. The, the crypto world has largely been kind of opposed to regulation. Yeah. That has kind of like been the whole ethos in the crypto world. Of, that yeah. Like, uh, you know, this is decentralization. Decentralization. Yeah. It's like internet in the 90s yeah. where, you know, it was the Wild West and that's how we want to continue to be. But, you know, something like FTX happens and even the crypto world understands that uh, regulation is essential. Right? Exactly. So yeah. Like this, because now it's so big. That yeah. The regulation is inevitable. And maybe. Uh, that will even push uh, the crypto world to regulate faster. I think so. Well, I, I think there's definitely uh, there's definitely certain areas of crypto. I think where, um, like, let's put it this way: if Binance was to fail tomorrow, right. we're in serious trouble, yeah. right? Like, uh, so I think I think the crypto world would recognize that there are things that can be done better um, in order to kind of ensure the future of crypto, um, because. Uh, something like FTX happening isn't good for anybody, right? So, um, yeah. so I think, uh, I, I think definitely people would be open to it, but I also think there's, there's a, there's just a thing that happens over time where people become more comfortable with technology and, yeah. um, 
it becomes less scary and then uh, ultimately more adaptable, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it seems inevitable at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, what other, like, is there any other trends that you see emerging in the uh, kind of crypto gambling world at the moment? Yeah, yeah, so uh, there's, well, I suppose there's, <laughs> there's, there's a couple of things. So there's, there's uh, a lot of brands who kind of had that, that first mover advantage uh, in the market. I think you're starting to see that fill up a little bit now and not quite there yet, but there's a lot of people uh, who are kind of starting to see the money that's been in crypto casinos and are now trying to jump the knowledge gap for themselves, right? So um, a lot of people we talk to, they basically go, I've seen stake.com and I want to, I want to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, exactly. so, uh, so it's, uh, I think, I think that's probably what you'll see over the course of the next, uh, you know, 18 months, two years, I think you'll start to see a lot of brands, um, turn up. And I think, uh, that'll be really good for the, for the crypto casino market, to give the, the punters choice, you know, I think, um, that's a very positive development. Uh, and then I think, um, there's a, there's a few other interesting things. So, uh, I, I actually think the level of product development in the credit in the crypto casinos at the moment outstrips what happens in the fiat world. Um, and a lot of that's probably because they don't have to worry as tightly about regulation and, um, and, and, and that kind of thing. But, uh, if you look at it like a roll bit or something like that, they're rolling out new cool product features every, right. every few months, right. Or every couple of weeks, even in some yeah. cases. So, um, they they recently released a, a crypto futures betting product where you can bet on the price of crypto as it goes up and, and, oh, yeah, and goes down, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and then not too long late or late kind of Q three last year, I think they released uh, the the ability to stake NFTs, like to to kind of use NFTs as collateral for staking oh, nice. and stuff like that. So, um, I think you see. Uh, a level of product development in the industry, which is or, uh, innovative product development, which is kind of over and above everything else that's out there at the moment. And then also, I think you're going to see kind of a, a gold rush of operators um, coming to the market now over the course of the next uh, 18 months or so, which I think is great for the industry. Yeah, yeah it's uh, interesting, isn't it? I mean, you've been in the industry for a long time mm. and obviously coming from the fiat uh, gambling world where... Uh, Somewhere a couple of years ago, five, six years ago, um, more and more markets started to regulate uh, locally, which uh, the kind of tier ones were welcoming the uh, uh, the regulation at first. Yeah. Uh, but uh, after a while, I think many uh, operators started to realize that actually this is just causing a, a lot of operational complexity. It's very difficult as a right to stay compliant. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. And so it feels almost like many of the tier ones are mainly focusing on the staying compliant rather than uh, product development. Yeah. And uh, that's almost creating a rift in the industry where um, you have one part of the industry that is uh, becoming whiter, so to say, that yeah. is moving more towards the like, regulated only environment. And then another part of the industry is uh, is kind of uh, dancing in the uh, gray markets, the regulated, yeah. regulated markets uh, with uh, yeah, the crypto gambling approach, for example, where they do have much more resources to focus on just uh, creating an excellent product. And this is what people say about stake, for example, right? It's like, it's not only that they are able to offer crypto, which is like a good solution for many players, but also that their product is superior to other operators. And, and this is the thing, right? And if you're a player, which experience are you going to choose? You know, you're going to, you're going to choose the, the compliant one or the fun one. Um, yeah. So uh, I think that's... Uh, I, I, I think I, I really kind of feel for uh, people working in product in a regulated uh, operator at the moment, because like you say, you're trying to fulfill uh, the, the, the regulations in one market and another market, and they're not necessarily always the same, right? So um, uh, often you can spend a lot of your time just kind of spinning plates, trying to keep up with, uh, with everything that's going on. Another interesting thing here, here I just took note of this, that um, I know that, that you guys kind of pivoted towards uh, crypto oh. crypto gambling as uh, launching white labels recently. And so obviously you've been navigating like a crypto winter. Yeah. Kind of a sudden. Uh, how has uh, that impacted uh, kind of uh, <laughs> your ability to do business in this environment? Is still a, lo a lot of appetite to launch crypto uh, gambling? Do you know what there is? Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one because uh obviously one of the things we thought as we started the business was how uh exposed are we to the price of of of, right. of crypto and not not even just from a it affects the amount of money that you have in your bank accounts but actually 
what's, yeah, like, and, and what's her sales prospects going to be like right like yeah. who wants to open a crypto casino when the when the price is on the floor right so um right. but uh i think from a from a number one from a player perspective we found that um it doesn't really have a large effect uh i think what you find is that people players think and um and uh, t think in, in in terms of fiat values right so i don't think a lot of people really know what a off the top of their head, if I said to you a cup of coffee is point zero zero zero, yeah, you know, exactly. uh, I don't think they really understand what the value of that, whether it's a good deal or not. So um, I think when, and I, and I think a lot of the players that we see are players that aren't, it's not It's not like you've got a big bank of players who are holding on to large swaths of crypto for a long time and they're just continually exhausting that supply, right? A lot of them are going on and they're buying crypto for the purpose of gambling and stuff like that. So um in terms of the dollar value, you don't see an awful lot of oscillation with the price of crypto uh, because I don't think players are um, only betting what they're holding. You know, they're they're kind of they're they're, they're on ramping the whole time. Um, and then even from a uh, from an operator perspective, um, I think a lot of people. I, I think you either believe in crypto long term or you don't, right? Um, and okay, maybe, maybe there's some catastrophic event that could happen someday that would blow the confidence out of everything. But until then, I think yeah, people either kind of solidly believe that crypto is here to stay or they don't. And if you believe that it is here to stay, opening the casinos, you're probably amenable to the idea, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's, uh, I don't think that really shakes the confidence of people. No, oh, fair enough. Mm. And, and, and on that note uh, as well, like, do you think eventually the tier ones that are kind of kind of like pursuing this like regulated strategy today they must be also obviously aware of what's happening on the other side of the fence yeah um uh, do you think at some point uh, they will uh, manage to figure out a way to stay compliant by still accepting um crypto deposits? i think the, i think they'll get there eventually um mm -hmm. but but they'll, they'll move with regulation right well I, I they might even start to try push regulation but um yeah. I, I know from people I talk to in, in, in tier one regulators that they're all having conversations about these casinos and what they're doing, and they're all very interested in what they're doing, you know? Um, and they definitely want to slice of that pie themselves, but the only question is how they can maneuver given their um, business commitments or, or, or jurisdictional uh, regulatory commitments or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think inevitably i think all of the tier ones are interested i'd be surprised if none of them were uh if if there's any one of them that weren't looking at it um but i think the, their ability to maneuver on it in the short term might right. be it's tricky. A, uh, it's dependent on the regulator yeah essentially. yeah um just moving over as well so you mentioned earlier um you know nfts uh, potentially you can identify yourself uh using NFTs yeah. and so on and i you know just to take a step back I, I think it's kind of interesting that uh the um the hype word of 2021 was like Web3, uh, NFTs, uh, and in the last, say, six, nine months, uh, we haven't really heard that expression popping yeah. up anymore. It's like if uh, crypto is in a winter, like the Web3 uh, kind of um, ventures and promises seems to be in an even deeper winter at the moment. Yeah. Um, wh what do you think uh, this future technologies hold for the online gambling industry specifically? Yeah, uh, was it just kind of a temporary hype, or do you think that uh, there will be a kind of use cases that will eventually turn from promises into actual usability yeah. from the NFT metaverse Web three general point of view? Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, well, I mean, you take it take it in turn, right? I think um, the uh, I and mean, we kind of briefly touched on earlier on the 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 day of uh, people selling cartoon monkeys is probably over, right? Um, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know if I ever, uh, I don't know if I ever really believed in that in the first place. Um, yeah. But um, the, uh, the, the, I think the, uh, there's, there's some, definitely some possible use cases that are there, right? So there's stuff yeah. like, uh, there's stuff like the verification um, use case. So like, uh, if you wanted to verify yourself uh, with some sort of central regulator, and then we're able to use that NFT to 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 verify yourself at an operator at a different point, then yeah. that that's a possible use case. There's uh, 
another possible use case where someone signs up as nearly like a VIP junket runner and gives all of their users NFTs. And then when they go into casinos, casinos can recognize them as NFTs, as a VIP straight away and then yeah. give them preferential treatment. Um, but uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if there's any kind of large scale use case uh, for NFTs in the industry. I think the metaverse thing is interesting. Um, again, I don't think I'm really a believer in uh, everyone's going to be wearing headsets and and uh, and, and running around uh, <laughs> kind of a virtual world talking to each other. Time to sell the Facebook stock in other <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was never really a firm believer in that in that, in that move. But um, I do think there's a, an opportunity for somebody to do something in um, in the way of like. Uh, some sort of community experience, whether it's like a video game or uh, in something in gambling. I don't think anybody's ever really cracked that, right? Like, yeah. um, and uh, definitely the the younger generation of of players. And if you talk about that community thing, it just feels like that there's a, there's a potential match there. And I don't know what the I don't know what the actual solution is, right? If I did, I'd probably be trying it. But um, <laughs> but uh, there, de- I, I think I do think you know. If we look back at this in 10, 15 years time, we'll go, oh yeah, that was the, uh, th- they were the ones who made all the money off the, off the, uh, gaming gambling experience. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Like, cause, uh, there, there were already a couple of, um, kind of successful cases, uh, in the central land where mm. ice poker became really big for a That's while, right, yeah, yeah. you know, they generated some like stupid amount of money. They, 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 like tens of millions of dollars every month or something like that in uh, in rake basically uh, of people basically entering uh, the metaverse and playing poker yeah right so there was kind of like some at least temporary stickiness to uh, to that uh, product um and also uh, th- there were like another promise in this from the from a web3 perspective which is like the promise of a decentralized internet yeah. was uh, also like the promise of uh, kind of decentralized sports betting exchanges and yeah, yeah. that was also great. And that there's, um, I know that we are hosting um, one of the guys, Warren Sudakar, mm. he's the CEO and founder of a company called uh, Betex, yeah. which is uh, it's launched as a decentralized sports book, yeah, basically to remove the middle person there essentially. And that's, that was also the idea in many of the other kind of Web3 products on, say, for music, for example, the idea was like uh, in Spotify, uh, Spotify takes like whatever, 80% of the revenue and 20% goes to the artist. Yeah. Whereas uh, a future decentralized music platform would give, say, 95% of the revenue to the artist, for example. And that seems to be a very good promise for the artist just like for the gambler it's a good uh, proposal to remove the middle person in order to place bets without uh, kind of the middle mer- person taking fees or whatever yeah is this like too far-fetched do you think these type of promises no i think or... I, I think they're entirely possible um the the interesting thing about them though i think that i think the challenge for them is um so if if uh if you're a casino player, you're playing, even even if you're playing against other people and you're not playing against the house, it's the same experience, right? You're still playing against somebody. And uh, I feel like somebody who gets 80% of the revenue or whatever it is uh, as the casino is going to be able to make a better experience for you than somebody who's, you know, making a lot, making a lot less of that from, right. a, from, a, from a product perspective. So I think, that, I think that is the challenge for something decentralized like that. It's to keep up with the same experience that's being offered by um kind of like a private operator you know um because i think the idea of that you know tickles your uh sense of socialism but uh (laughs) but uh, i don't know i I don't know if i don't know if ultimately it it will deliver you a better experience as a player and i think that's 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 kind of the the drawback yeah exactly it's i think the uh you know for me you know kind of navigating the uh uh, the crypto summer that took place in 2021 and 2022 when the promises were that you know we, we're gonna enter a world where like spotify gets disrupted yeah. by this like decentralized platform i was i was thinking you know the irony is uh, that uh, looking at um uh, OpenSea, like the the biggest uh, trading platform for nfts mm. is a centralized uh, yeah. entity yeah and so you would think that like the first company that will be disrupted is OpenSea. Of course. And obviously there are decentralized NFT marketplaces like uh, LooksRare, for mm-hmm. example, um, 
which launched with like a great UI experience, um, decentralized, much lower fees, yeah. you know, you get rewards and still like, I don't know now, like, I mean, OpenSea is 20 times bigger than yeah. Looks very still. Yeah. It's just uh, funny to me how not even uh, OpenSea has been disrupted in this. And that, at least to me, seems to mean that like, yeah, the, we, we have a capitalist system for a it's, reason. Exactly, <laughs> it, it exactly. Yeah. It, seems, it seems that if you motivate people for, with profit, uh, it, works, it, it yeah. tends to work. Yeah, <laughs> it tends yeah, to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad we've underpinned uh, <laughs> the, the workings of democracy on this, or of uh, capitalism on this podcast. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so here, we're going to start running off uh, here a little bit, but just to go back uh, to the regulatory question yeah. uh, again, um, you know, you have, I, I've been in industry for a long time as well as, as you have, and I yeah. remember in the 2000s where online poker became huge, yeah. right? it exploded and it became huge. And um, largely in the United States, online poker was massive as well, but uh, obviously operating in a kind of a gray zone, yeah. the gray area as well. And, and um, Eventually, the man put its foot down, and um, that happened during a fateful Black Friday, mm -hmm. essentially, where uh, where the American uh, regulators uh, cracked down on online poker, uh, which resulted in basically they they prohibited banks from being able to transfer yeah. uh, from allowing their customers to transfer money into the online banking uh, world, and then obviously with some stark warnings to the operators that if you continue your operation, they will pursue legal action. Some of the poker operators withdrew from the North American markets, yeah. uh, PokerStars, for example, mm -hmm. whereas others at that time, full tilt, yeah. continued to operate in, in the North American market. A couple of years later, um, the hammer came down against those uh, who uh, operated in the market and mm. uh, full tilt was and others were, were closed down overnight. Uh, players' funds were seized for yeah. many years until then Pokestars uh, acquired Full Tilt a couple of years later. Uh, but I'm, I'm saying this story because um, when this happened, obviously a lot of money was uh, was was uh, coming out of the United States into yeah. the pockets of, of these operators. And in a similar way now, the crypto uh, online, online crypto world, Something similar is happening from, say, specifically, specifically from North American point of view, that uh, a lot of money is, is uh, flowing out of the United States. Do you think eventually there is a risk that um, the uh, kind of unreg unregulated crypto casinos that are operating in uh, in markets like the United States or in Germany, which is like also heavily kind of um, policed, yeah, uh, eventually will something similar will happen, like a Black Friday 2.0? I think it's entirely possible, right? It's uh, it's definitely something I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't rule out. That definitely that 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 type of business, um, the the full tilt style operator, right. uh, might might certainly alert the um, attention of authorities uh, in, in in some of the the states that more kind of uh, strictly defend their their borders as or, um, but I think. Uh, I think a couple of things. I think I think you, and you kind of you kind of alluded to it there. I think there's I think there's different classes of uh, of crypto operator, right? I think there's some who um, will will kind of ignore everything, right? And they'll just they'll just go and, and take revenue wherever they can. And I think there's others who operate that a little bit more responsibly and um, are a little bit more careful, kind of about what they do. So I think one business approach is more sustainable than the other, right? And I think we would encourage our operators to move towards the, the more sustainable approach but um i uh the, the only other thing about it is that um it's going to be more difficult for them to crack down on right because uh there's no bank accounts like there's no there's no um the 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 government's reach over uh decentralized crypto wallets is null right yeah, um, impossible. yeah so like i mean well that's just what they're unless they they plan on doing things around uh around exchanges and how they right. they, they on ramp and off ramp the crypto um that's ultimately the point at which you can kind of which which the government can take control again right but right. Uh, i think that's 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 kind of the, but 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 uh otherwise it would be very difficult for them to do yeah yeah no that's um it makes sense that was the solution back in the 2000s mm. to restrict the, the fiat is heavily regulated, restricted, centralized. And so there were solutions to that, but in the crypto world, that's it. It's, it's much more difficult. Yeah. That is the thing. Yeah. Uh, so Hugh, um, 
what's the what's the what comes next for the for Bad Ombre Gaming? What's your plans for twenty twenty three and uh, and beyond? Yeah, great question. So we, uh, um, I think a lot of what we do this year is around. Um, Firstly, we want to obviously onboard more op more operators into, onto our onto our platform. So we feel like we've very we've done a lot of the groundwork in building out a strong platform. Um, one of the things we spent a lot of time doing is making sure that our onboarding process has gotten very tight. So we're able to onboard operators quite quickly, right? So I think one of the big advantages that we have as a platform is that if you if you want to get your crypto casino live, I think there's very long waiting lists at other. Um, at other platforms so if you come to us we can get you we can get you up and moving a lot quicker and um, we've done a lot of work to make sure that we can do that um, and then one of the other things i think i mentioned it earlier on but we're really trying to build out um more optionality around the the offering that you that you give as a, as a brand to your customers right so um there's a lot of configuration capability in the platform in terms of what features you turn on and what you turn off and how you configure them um, and in terms of how your website looks and feels so uh, we've a we've a very good platform there that allows you to um, build up your own pages and and build up your own website effectively. We want to add to the library of items that we have in that. So we want to give um, potential brands more templates and more features and more uh, different widgets that they're able that they're able to add to their front end. You know, so um, I think that's our primary focus is to make sure that we're we've done a lot of work on the platform side. I think. Um, the big thing that we'd like to focus on this year is making sure that the player experience is, 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 is as tight as it could be. So we really want to be up there in, in, in step with all of the tier one crypto casinos uh, in terms of feature parity um, and then making that making that operator uh, onboarding experience as, as good as we can. Fantastic, you. It's uh, been a pleasure to have you on here and thank you so much for giving me your time today. Thanks, Pierre. An absolute pleasure. Thank you. All right. Cheers.